Hello and welcome to MailTrap videos where we explore the world of emails. In this video, we'll show you how to create a contact form in Flask. Flask is a popular web framework written in Python that is designed to make building web applications easier. The framework can also be used to send emails, a process we cover in a dedicated tutorial on our channel. For this tutorial, we'll focus on using Flask for email contact form creation. To start, we need to open an empty main.py file. Along with that file, we'll also have a file called vars.py, which holds things such as email API credentials, and a folder called templates, which holds the contact form HTML template. After opening the main.py file, it's time to complete some imports. First, we import functions and classes from the Flask web framework. Then, we import the support for sending emails from a Flask application. Lastly, we import our MailTrap email testing credentials from the vars.py file, which we'll need to see if our code and form are functional and can send an email. If Flask and Flask Mail aren't yet installed in your Python environment, you should install them by running the pip install Flask command and the pip install Flask Mail command. With that done, we can proceed with writing the code. For the first line, we initialize a new Flask web application instance. After its initialization, the Flask web application needs to be configured to use email services and send emails through an SMTP server. This is done by setting the required parameters, such as email server, port, username, password, TSL, and SSL usage. What also needs to be set is a secret key for the application. This secret key is crucial for several Flask functionalities, most notably for securely signing the session cookie and for other security-related needs. Next comes the initialization of the Flask mail extension with your Flask application. This will allow the mail object to be used throughout your Flask application to send emails. Once you've completed this second initialization, your Flask app should be all configured. As the next step, we'll define a route and its associated view function that will show our contact form. So first, we write a decorator that tells Flask to execute the index function whenever a web client requests the root URL of our application. Then, we define the index view function. Inside the index function, the render template function is called with the argument contact.html. This tells Flask to render the HTML template named contact.html. To run our Flask application in debug mode, we can use the following line. But before running it, we need to create a route in our Flask application to handle email sending through a form submission. We start off this process by writing a decorator that defines the route that will accept post requests. Form data for sending an email should be submitted here. Then we define a view function that will be executed when the route is accessed with a post request and we check if the incoming request is a POST request. Using the next few lines, we'll retrieve data from the submitted form fields, such as name, email, and message, using Flask's request.form object. We will then use this data to create a new message object and set its properties, the subject, the sender's email, and the recipient's email, as well as the body, which includes the sender's name, email, and message. With our Flask mail instance configured and message created, we can write the line that will actually send the email. The mail class object has a send method that accepts a single parameter, an instance of the message class. So we'll call it for this purpose. Next, we need to call the flash function. This function is a useful tool for conveying information to the user, such as success notifications, error messages, warnings, etc. Lastly, we'll write the code for redirecting a user after a form submission using the redirect function. This function returns a response object and redirects the user to a different target URL. To the redirect function, we'll pass a URL generated by the URL for function after it accepts the index function name as an argument. At this point, we can run our code. 
Upon running, we should open the app running address in a browser. By default, Flask applications run on the address highlighted on the screen, unless specified otherwise. Opening the running address should show us the index page of our Flask application, where our contact form is located. To test the form, we'll fill out the form fields and click send. If everything goes as expected, a message confirming that an email has been sent will appear at the top of the form. As we used MailTrap email testing credentials for demonstration purposes, our email landed in our MailTrap virtual inbox, confirming the functionality of our code and form. And with that, we come to the end of our tutorial. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by MailTrap, an email delivery platform to test, send, and control your email infrastructure all in one place. Like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to see more tutorials like this one. Don't forget to check out our other videos for more useful content on email deliverability. See you in the next one.